We have come to the beginning of the mediation uh, section of today. We're just going to extend from now until uh, mid-afternoon. And this is the picture to behold. But we're going to find new wrinkles to this picture. So if, it's good that you feel familiar with it now, but because soon it's going to be all... We have a way of making it complex, don't we? So let's define some terms first. So we're going to talk about, you know, in, in regular mediation modeling, you have an X variable, an M variable, and a Y variable. So we're going to talk about the X variable. So in line with epidemiological literature, we're going to call this X variable an exposure variable now to move you slowly into uh, modern mediation analysis terminology. Uh, you can just think of it as a binary treatment control variable if you want, although it can certainly be uh, continuous. But in epi, I guess they talk about exposure. Maybe it's you know, exposure to lead or something like that. And we're going to have a control variable C. That's the notation they use. And then, of course, the mediator is M and the outcome is Y. So if you look at this, you know that the usual uh, indirect effect is beta 1 gamma 1, and the usual direct effect is beta 2, right? Now, we, we want to encourage uh, people to include control variables uh, because for, for several good reasons. Uh, you saw in uh, Morton's example of uh, aggressive disruptive behavior in Baltimore public schools that C was actually uh, aggressive behavior uh, pre-intervention and then he looked at uh, aggression in grade five, which would then be, say, the M here, you know, just considering this simple regression. But anyway, even in, in a randomized study, is it useful to have a, a control variable because it increases the power to de detect effects? You know, to think about ANCOVA, for instance. But uh, in mediation studies, even more so, uh, it helps you avoid a basic problem, an Achilles heel of mediation analysis, namely uh, the potential for a, a correlation between M and Y that is not accounted for by the model. You know, here now we say that C influences both of these two. But if you draw, didn't have C, but it still influenced both of them, that would imply that the residuals of Y and M would be correlated. And you can't estimate that correlation on top of this regression. It's not identified. So there you have C to avoid so-called mediator outcome confounding, which is, uh, like I said, the Achilles heel of mediation analysis. In this case, we have no interactions, uh, no moderation, that is. So it's very simple. But uh, we're going to go to uh, a first case of interaction. And in the book, uh, we, we uh, distinguish between three cases. Different authors have different uh, classification system, like Chris Preacher has one and uh, Andrew Hayes has another. So now we're going to look at case XZ. So uh, we're going to moderate uh, the regression of Y on X and M on X by Z. So if you look at M, so look at this picture. You, what you should think about, these are two regressions. You have two dependent variables. You regress M on these, and you regress Y on all of these. So uh, we have X times C moderating the regression of M on X. And we have X times C moderating the regression of Y primarily on M here. So, and, and, and X, I should say. So in this case, we have uh, indirect and direct formulas down at the bottom here. And the uh, indirect formula is beta 1 times gamma 1, but plus the term beta 1 times gamma 3, Z. So this is the moderator that Morton talked about in the first regression example. <clears throat> and then we're going to get you used to the notation of x1 minus x0 in parentheses here. Usually this is 1, so it disappears. It doesn't show up. Why is it 1? Well, for two reasons. Uh, one is if x is continuous, we usually consider a one standard deviation change in x when we talk about an indirect effect. 
So x1 minus x0 is 1. So it's for, for one standard deviation, say increase in x, uh, how, how big is the indirect effect? Or in treatment control studies, x1 is 1 and x0 is 0. So that also comes out to be 1. But we're going to see that uh, working with x1 and x0 explicitly is, uh, makes it possible for us to come up with more general uh, indirect or direct formulas for uh, new types of applications. All right, so that's fairly familiar. The direct effect is beta 2 plus, but also beta 4 via z connects to x. So you're probably familiar with that formula. Now, uh, case 2. Then you have m interacting with z. So there you only are, the, the mod moderation is only with respect to y as a dependent variable. That is, z moderates the effect of m on y. And again, uh, you see it in the indirect effect here. In the indirect effect is not only beta 1 times gamma 1, but it's beta 4 times c times gamma 1. So z moderates the effect. Uh, with respect to how m influences y. So uh, that regression has a different slope uh, depending on the z values. And still you have the x1 minus x0 and the direct beta 2 x1 minus x0. It's quite simple in that case. Now case 3, that's when the action starts getting really interesting. <clears throat> and this really shows the strength of what we're going to talk about after lunch, namely the modern mediation analysis topic using so-called counterfactually defined causal indirect and direct effects. This is the case that these people who uh, do research in the causal effect area brings up because it, it is this, the best uh, example where all variables m and y are continuous but still it's complex enough to try to come up with the in, what the indirect and direct effects are. And I bet you, you have never seen this direct effect expression. Because I haven't found it in the uh, psychometric literature or in the uh, mediation literature. I've seen this indirect effect derived, but not this. So what we're talking about is the case of m multiplying x. So the moderator is still uh, in the regression of y on m and x. And the, mo the moderator is x itself, or m. You can see m as the moderator, I guess. And uh, the indirect effect is beta 1 times uh, gamma 1, beta 1 times gamma 1, and then beta 3 times x1, which is the x1 value here, which is one of these values that we do for comparison. So that's a novelty already. We have never before seen. Uh, the uh, comparison point, x1, brought into the indirect effect formula. So with that kind of interaction, m times x, you actually, uh, the size of the indirect effect depends on where, you, where on the x, uh, x scale you make the comparison. So x1 comes in there. And in the direct effect, x0 comes in here. You know, so they're not only out here. But they enter the formulas. So x0, that, that comparison point, the lower comparison point, comes into play in the direct effect. I think you would be very hard pressed probably to intuitively come up with these formulas by looking at the path diagram. It would be very hard. We need a principle for deriving these, and that's what we're going to talk about at length when we talk about modern mediation modeling. Another interesting feature here in the direct effect is that gamma 0, which is the intercept in the regression of m on these variables, plays a role in the direct effect. Never before have we seen an inter intercept playing a role in a, an effect, right? That's not the classic um, mediation case. So x1 and x0 get involved, and gamma 0 get involved, and c gets involved. That is the comparison value, the value of the control variable gets involved. So it depends on which value of the control variable you think is relevant. 
it, the direct effect will change as a function of that. So it's a very, un very different formula. And in fact, you make, you, when you have these kinds of models, interaction between m and x in their influence on y, you want to be sure that you have your control variables in a scale that you really want them to be. For instance, you may want to center them so that they have mean zero. So you want to make this direct effect at the mean, in which case this term uh, gets eliminated, falls out. And if this beta 3, this uh, moderator effect here, if that, if that is not zero, if that's actually non-zero, the indirect effect exists even if beta 1 is zero. So beta 1 can be zero, but there's still an, so this could be zero, and it could still be an indirect effect because it's beta 3 x1 times gamma 1. So it's a very unusual case in many regards, right? And that's why the causal effects people love to bring it up. Uh, this case where m and x interact, interact in the effect of y. So the treatment, you get the treatment and you get a high m value. Those two together generate a good desirable outcome for y. People overlook that case. I mean, it has been studied in the uh, old the classic mediation literature, but um, it's often overlooked because beta 3 is often uh, insignificant. And that's usually, that's often the case when you talk about slope or coefficients for interactions. The power to reject that they're zero is very low. You need large samples for that. And we're going to talk about uh, the p possible virtue of including that interaction effect even when it's insignificant. But we'll get back to that. So um, this is three moderation cases. And here is a cheat sheet for a, or a summary of M plus options. And you may want to scribble here uh, that in the version 8 users guide, these options are described in detail on the pages 763 to 766. 763 to 766. Describe these different options. No moderation, you write it as usual with int in the model indirect command. Moderation with z. Uh, case one here, where there's a typo here that you should correct. This z should, uh, spell, should be an x. This should be an x right there. So that's case one uh, moderation. This is case two moderation. Here you have case one combined with case two, and at the bottom you have case three. These kinds of expressions are also used uh, when we talk about the uh, modern mediation modeling and uh, the counterfactually defined effects. And with that, I'm going to hand over and we're going to see some examples. <laughs>